don't like Anastasia Shimmers, watch everyone just exit out of this video. It doesn't do anything for me. She had the audacity to show those fucking swatches on a deep skin tone. Photo was leaked of them showing the white power sign. I guess so today's video I wanted to do my makeup on camera because I feel like I haven't done my makeup in fucking ages on camera anyway. Can you please just ignore the fact that the shirt I'm wearing underneath is back to front and you can see the label can we just pretend that that's a necklace or something i changed my outfit like six or seven times for this video because <laughs> i felt so uncomfortable so um yeah let's just ignore that it's not exactly a challenge but i wanted to put on some super overhyped makeup that i personally like just don't i don't really get or worse don't even understand why i bought so let's get into this I use my um, Urban Decay Primer Potion because I feel like people don't really talk about eyeshadow primers. Most people just use fucking concealer, which as an oily person, like, I, I just can't. <laughs> I have seen people talk about the P. Louise one a lot. I feel like it's just because it's on the Morphe website now, especially. I've heard Robert Welsh say it's not great anyway. The eyeshadow palette I want to talk about is the Modern Renaissance. I feel like this thing. I got this at the same time that I got this. Don't. Don't come for me. I preferred the colour story of this one. Everyone said the colour story was great. It was just that the blend was pretty difficult. I bought this just literally just because everyone said it was like the palette to have at the time in like 2018. This one is like in everyone's yearly favourites. The Anastasia shadows are so bomb. I don't use these shades. I also, super controversial opinion, I don't like Anastasia shimmers. Watch everyone just exit out of this video. I've used these sort of palettes. I even have my favourite one, the the Sultry. Like, look how pretty. That's my favourite of all of hers. Or the, um, what was that colourful one called? A Sadwoods? No. That's a, that's the woman from Little Mix, right? Pretty really colourful one. I think she was the winner of the Drag Race. I can't remember. I don't watch it, I apologise. I watch the same things over and over again and I am surprised when everything moves past me. <laughs> the shimmers, I used to wear these a lot because they were some of the only high-end palettes I owned at the time. I was like, well, everyone likes these, so these must be really good. So I tried to use the shimmers in this palette. And this goes for every palette. This goes for even the sultry that's my favorite. They don't last on me. And it's not because I have oily eyelids. I just don't think. I mean, they're really pretty when you first put them on, but they just don't last all day. Don't have the same punch as when you put them on straight away and i know you're thinking well they wouldn't i've had other palettes don't expect that from a high-end like 40 50 quid fucking palette i just think that's not good enough like i just don't use warm shades like anymore i do the same thing almost every time with this palette it's like the mattes are nice i'm not saying that there's anything wrong with the mattes the mattes are they blend really nicely if you like the color story i think you'll enjoy it Maybe some people don't have the same problem as me with shimmers. Or maybe it's just because I have oily eyelids and therefore they fade. I don't know. I don't know what it is. This goes for every brand in this video. That is not to say that I don't like these brands. That is one brand that I will be talking about that I'm boycotting. They're liquid lipsticks. A lot of people don't really like liquid lipsticks anymore because obviously they're drying. It's not for everyone. Um, I just like them because they're super convenient, like I can eat and drink half the majority of the time as long as I'm not having something super greasy. I don't have to reapply it, like I hate reapplying lipstick or worrying that it's going to go all over my face or all over my teeth. But that's another reason why I don't really wear glosses, as pretty as they are on camera. I'm constantly like, is that in my teeth? Like I'm constantly checking. Complete side note, tangent, nothing to do with brands. One of the things I hate, like obviously I'm doing my makeup now so I'm having to look at a mirror. <laughs> But what I'm saying is there are some YouTubers, and this isn't to say that I'm shading any YouTubers. I feel like I have to caveat everything I'm saying. It is really frustrating watching some YouTubers and all they're doing, rather than looking at the camera lens, and I know there are some, some people that don't. Like, so for instance, Casey Neistat, he wears sunglasses specifically because he, he doesn't want to distract when he's constantly having to check see if he's in focus or something. What do I do with my glasses off? I don't look like I'm looking at you. I look over here. So like, 
Imagine if in all my vlogs, I'm looking like this. It starts to feel really weird. But when I have glasses on, it always looks like I'm looking at camera. I'm gonna use a mixture of Primavera and Demira. It's been pretty and stunning. It won't be like that in about fucking two hours. So annoying. There's some YouTubers who are doing your makeup, fine. If you're talking to someone, fine. If you're literally just talking to the audience, it's really annoying when people are constantly looking here, looking at themselves in the viewfinder or their screen. A lot of YouTubers have those like big screen things and they're literally just staring at themselves while they're talking to the audience. It's really annoying. <laughs> and I'm not trying to be rude, I'm just saying like, this is, it's just a frustration I have. It almost looks like a cool tone look, even this super warm palette. This is not who this is about. Gina Cooney does that all the time. That's because she has an ED and she's constantly body checking. Everyone, everyone knows that. I'll still watch them, I just won't watch the actual video. I'll basically just put it on in the background and listen to it. And I have like what looks like a bunch of spots on my face at the moment. Like I have these things here. I have a bunch like on my cheek and stuff. My skin, believe it or not, is actually the best it's been for a really long time. And these aren't like pus spots or anything like that. They're Miele cysts, I think that's what they're called. I think I have to go to my doctor to get like a special cream or something. Because they're like trapped skin or something. I can't remember. I did the doctor Google. Yeah, if any of you guys have had needle cysts before, can you can you tell me how to fix it? So for my primer, I'm actually going to use two. One of them is a setting spray, though. Baba, being so noisy today. So the faced hangover RX. This is my skin super smooth and hydrated and moisturized. I know this is a tiny one. This is not a primer that is for me with oily skin, but I was just like, I need to try this. Also, one of the reasons I picked this is because I don't know what it is. I don't have a dry nose. But foundations look shit on my nose recently. So I'm going to be putting a hydrating primer on my nose. It was so overhyped. All it is is a thin moisturiser. That is all it is. By the way, I, but I have no problem with people checking to see if they're in focus. It's when they're just constant, not looking at the viewfinder at all. If you just flick over, like I'm flicking over because I'm not holding a mirror, then I'm flicking back to... You're very, very noisy today. Also, the Urban Decay All Matter Setting Spray. I don't get it. This one has so many reviews. It's been a long time love. And this thing does not keep my makeup on. This is mini. I got it in one of those like duos because I wanted to try it out because everyone was fucking talking about it. And I've had this for ages. It's also a really shit spray. I feel like I'm drenching my face every time. It doesn't do anything for me. I don't get the hype. I really, really don't. Also, do you like my fan? My family went to Spain when I was like 13, 14, and I like was obsessed with the Spanish dancers with their, you know, <laughs> with their fan flipping and everything. I thought it was so cool. We all got fans um, at like the gift shop kind of things. So this is like tw at least probably 20, almost 20 years old, if not 20 years old. I'm gonna be 32 soon. This fucking thing, the L'Oreal Infallible Fresh Wear Foundation. Listen, there's nothing wrong with this foundation. It's a nice foundation. Patty and Kathleen Lyotts love this foundation. Well, I don't know if Patty does now because I don't watch her. I remember like this was always in the like top five or whatever it was from the drugstore. Kathleen Lyotts literally just spoke about this foundation. This is the best foundation at the drugstore. If I had to pick one, it would be this. Like it covers nicely, it's a nice foundation. I'm not saying any of these products are necessarily bad at all. Like some of them, for me this is not the best foundation of all time. And that's obviously, that is just personal preference. There's nothing wrong with it. It applies nicely, it's got good coverage. I don't see the difference between this and like their true match. My eyeshadow already does not look as wet looking as it did when I first applied it at all. And I used eyeshadow primer and I didn't set it. So what the fuck is that? It's it's almost like it wears off too quick because I definitely could not see the dark crease. It's completely worn off. And this is the same with every Anastasia, well, every palette like this anyway. I haven't bought any of the fucking Norvina palettes. There are so many eyeshadows that don't do this. Concealer. So one of them is Tarte Shape Tape. I, I kind of get Tarte Shape Tape. It was the first of its kind. 
Um, I, I know you could probably say that about the modern renaissance as well. However, this fucking wasn't. Now, I know this is the hydrating version, and that's because I got rid of the 16 hour. But the e.l.f. like camo concealers. I'm really, really into this so far. I cannot believe that they have made a concealer that I immediately am enjoying so much. I do not fucking get it. And I love e.l.f. Like there's so many products I fucking love from e.l.f. And I think that they're doing a really good job in like updating palettes. They are killing it at the moment. This product works for a lot of people. It clearly some things work for some and don't work for others. It's funny because when I first got the 16 hour concealer, I compared it against the Too Faced Born This Way. I thought it was just as good. It's, in my opinion now, it's not. Like the Too Faced Born This Way gives me coverage within the, literally two seconds. I don't know if it's because I get like kind of lighter shades in the camo concealer. I can't get on with that concealer. And also while we're talking about concealers real quick, NARS like pot concealers. I don't get it. Pot concealers in general, I just can't get on with. They crease on me in two seconds. I, like maybe they're just meant to be for blemishes. Just doing the Rose and Ben trick to make sure my eyeshadow looks a little bit more blended. I feel like it just doesn't brighten enough. I feel like I, it takes me ages to blend this concealer to a place that I like it. But if I turn these down a sec. Mm. And I'm not saying that it's because affordable concealers are shit at all. Not at all. Like the L'Oreal um, Matte Concealer, one of my holy grails. Collection Lost Infection, actual holy grail. Even hydrating conceal concealers, there are ones I like. The Colourpop Hydrating Concealer, the pre-fresh or whatever it is, that has been my go-to for the past like month and a half or whatever it is. So it's just, I cannot get on that e.l.f. camo concealer in the normal or the hydrating. Okay, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna sit under my eyes because I'm gonna use a cream bronzer and I'm going to use the Hourglass Veil Translucent Setting Powder. You guys have seen me talk about this and rave about this. Jesus, does everyone talk about this fucking powder? I did my Hourglass video. I could definitely see a difference on camera. Is it that price tag fucking difference though? No. Pretty? Yes. Worth a ridiculous amount of money? No. Looks nice on the face. It looks nice as a. This is definitely like a nice finishing powder. If you want to ha like give your foundation a little bit of life, I don't think this is gonna look good on my eyes. But while we're talking about um, hourglass, can I just highlight that their fucking eyeshadow palette for like 150 quid is more expensive than fucking Pat McGrath. Even I think Natasha Denona, like Natasha Denona does five pound palettes that are about 55 fucking quid. 150 quid for five eyeshadows that you curated yourself. I don't care. I'm actually going to just lightly set in certain areas. She mentioned that, like, we need to put Hourglass in the same realm as, like, Dior and Givenchy. Because she loves the Givenchy powder. The powder definitely does not look good on my, under my eyes. I will say that. Cream bronzer I want to talk about is something I bought when one of my videos, like, hit. One of my first ever videos that hit over a thousand views I think. So I've had this for a while. This is the Chanel Soleil Tan de Chanel. Okay, so next I'm gonna go in with a product that is my absolute summer can't live without staple. This comes in two shades, first of all, which is Chanel, what the fuck? <laughs> like seriously? So appetizing looking. It looks like, like a chocolate swirl. This bronzer was so over talked about by Jaclyn Hill. Everyone was obsessed for a while. It is a nice bronzer. It definitely gives you that kind of tannish look. It's just so fucking expensive. It's like a creamed powder. When you put it on, it kind of sets down itself, which is really nice. There are some bronzers, like liquid bronzers you can use. Don't do that. Like, why are products this expensive? Shade range is abysmal. And while speaking about the um, shade range and the person that, well, one of the people, that inspired me to get this bronzer. Can we just talk about Jaclyn Hill Cosmetics for a second? I mentioned that there was brand owners that were fucking constantly bitching about how hard their job is. Oh my God. Like you're a brand owner. I'm not saying your job isn't difficult, but your subscribers are probably not the best place to vent about how hard your life is. Like, please notice your privilege right now. Well, also Tati was one of the people. I'm just gonna fucking out it. Tati I'll link that video in case you're interested. I'll put it in the description and I'll put it in the cards. She brought out some bronzers. I'm sorry, she had the audacity to show 
those fucking swatches on a deep skin tone and they just looked ashy and she thought it was a good promo photo for a fucking limited edition summer collection just because something's limited edition does not mean that that is an excuse just because she turned around also and said that these chains will be expanded how can something be expanded if it's a limited edition collection like what the fuck but she said that oh they would be bringing one soon that's just not good enough you can do five shades of bronzers and have them be inclusive to turn around and blatantly show this is not the first time that Jacqueline's done this she did this with those fucking those bronzer blush duos they did not go deep enough there were literally colors there that were basically exactly the same like you swatch them they look exactly the fucking same rather than having those two basically exactly the same shades once you get them on the face why didn't you have another shade to be inclusive to your deeper skin toned fans no someone actually said to me on twitter well, Jacqueline makes products for her. She's a brand owner. You can't do that when you're a brand owner. Because if you do, you're a shitty fucking person. Because you've just completely alienated a population of the fucking planet. But people think that, oh, well, because she said she was going to bring it later, that's fine. No, it's not. We've seen this fucking bullshit for years now. This happened with Tarte in like 2017 or some shit. You can't get away with this shit anymore. We won't let you get away with this shit anymore. I'm gonna go with my contour. <laughs> that was a rant. The Shade and Light palette by fucking KVD. It is so understandable why this is such a hyped product because it is really good. I use it all the time. It, it was so, yeah, mine still says Kat Von D because I bought it when it was Kat Von D. I don't support Kat Von D anymore just to be fucking clear. This contour shade is nice, but I feel like the Kevin Aquan is actually way better. Jacqueline Hill Cosmetics came out with a statement to say that they would be better and all that kind of stuff. You didn't know that you didn't think that you could do better. Like, with the highlighters that she came out with, do you remember those fucking highlighters? As her retribution for her brand. Pretty certain she turned around and said that she worked with people of colour to make sure it worked for them. I asked my friends who have deep skin, I actually tried them on Jordan's friends. Then we also hired out 40 different people with deep skin tones as well to come in and help me create these two. Why were the bronzers not a priority too? You can't have it both ways. You can't turn around and say that you're working to make sure that your brand's inclusive and then literally within 12 months not be inclusive. It's just bullshit. It's really bullshit. This shade is actually pretty warm on me. It's not ashy enough. With those cream bronzers that have like literally no shade range, Anastasia Beverly Hills basically showed up Jacqueline Cosmetics because they've come out with it's eight to ten cream bronzers and they're inclusive. Just because she's an indie brand, firstly, like she's partnered with Morphe or the shareholders of Morphe or whatever for her brand so she has money that she can put into her fucking brand secondly indie brands are inclusive so using that as an excuse just because you like Jacqueline isn't a fucking excuse I like Jacqueline I think she's a nice person what happened to her recently is fucking horrifying and people trying to say that she's a liar is disgusting so for people to try and say that she's lying just because of her shitty bronzer collection is really fucking ridiculous so talking of brands that I'm not impressed with but this is literally a brand that I'm boycotting Let's talk about Oprah Cosmetics. So I have the Nikki Tutorials collaboration. I got this literally, I think it was in like 2017, 2016. Oh my God. You literally need the tiniest little bit. Still one of my Holy Grail highlighters, but I'm gonna use this one today, which is the uh, Steph Toms collab. So Steph Toms is a YouTuber. She's really lovely. Like if you don't follow her, I don't know what you're doing with your life. <laughs> she's really nice. She's like one of those really honest reviewers. Like this is her collab that she did. However, she has now pulled her Ofra collab because of the owner's husband, I think it is. I just saw this thing and I was just like, right there, bye. I'm pretty sure the person that owns Ofra is called Ofra. I feel like I'm also getting that wrong. Anyway, the brand owner, and their husband is involved in the business. A photo was leaked of them showing the white power sign. Firstly, I didn't even know this was a thing. To me, that just looked like okay. For instance, if you're eating and the waiter comes over to you and asks your food okay and you've got your mouth full, you say okay. Basically, fucking Nazis have taken that over. That's now a white power symbol. I'm gonna have to ruin everything. <laughs> really wet looking. If I turn down the lights, 
it still looks wet looking. It's so pretty. Steph um, pulled her highlighter and I have so much respect for um, Steph doing that. I'm pretty sure fucking Nikki Tutorials hasn't even done that. I didn't even really have that much from Ofra. I had these highlighters and maybe like a couple of liquid lipsticks. And once I go through those, that's it. Ofra, bye. Unless they change their brand owner like they did with Lime Crime. Lime Crime had like a really shit brand owner for a really long time. And then they've now moved away, similar to like the KVD thing. Now, w wait, I like this blush. The Milani Baked Blushes are phenomenal. I think it's really pretty. This is kind of like the OG blush. Maybe this was like the first of the shimmery, glowy kind of blushes. I don't really remember because I feel like this came on the scene before I bought it. Um, I bought it because it was Kathleen Light's fucking favourite and she always kept saying that it, this was like everyone's favourite at the time. I've been a Kathleen Light's fan for a really long time. It is a pretty blush but at the end of the day it's basically just a peach blush. It leans a little pinky actually. I don't grab for this blush because of the colour. Like, I don't even grab for peachy blushes anymore. I grab for, like, nude blushes. My holy grail blushes at the moment is a <laughs> nude blush from the Mulan collection from Colourpop and the KVD, like, I can't remember the fucking shade name, but one of those in, like, the super nude colours. I tend to do cool tone looks nowadays, so I don't use blush that often. I also put blush, like, really high up, like, 80s-esque. I really feel like it lifts my face. Okay, so let's quickly talk about brows. And I feel like this whole brand, I think that's overhyped over these, all Benefit brow products. I love Benefit brow products. I've used Benefit brow stuff for the past, I don't even know, however long. Benefit brow products are good. I'm not saying they're not. They are good products. I have like nothing left of this. So I'm just gonna do what I can and then I'll probably have to fill it in. They are good. It is a nice hard pencil. Index pencils are basically exactly the fucking same and way less expensive. I don't use pencils anymore. Once I found brow pens, I've never looked back. Brow pens have been out for a while now, and I'm pretty sure Benefit still has yet to come out with a brow pencil. Aren't brows like your thing? Don't you like pay everyone to talk about your brow products? Can you keep up? So I finished off my um, brows with the, why did I say that so weird? <laughs> With the Ink Stain by Urban Decay and the Colourpop Brow Boss, these two are just my favourite. I also buffed some eyeshadow on my lower lash line just so you didn't have to sit here for that. The Marc Jacobs pencils. The Marc Jacobs highliner eyeliners are the best eyeliners in the world. I appreciate I've only got one of these. So I let this like dry out. A chunk of it just came off. These are good, but I, I don't get the hype. But what I will say, why are you not warming up? I'm just taking like chunks of this pencil off. Let's try it. Um, one of the reasons I kind of wanted to use this is just to highlight that I don't know if you know. Someone please tell Kathleen Light. Mark Jacobs is closing their doors. This isn't gonna work. I'm assuming this is completely like dried out and I have to throw this away. But I have a problem throwing away money. And I use the Royal Beauty Christie Colourpop one. Not much better. Yeah, did you guys know that Mark Jacobs is shutting down? First Becca, now Marc Jacobs. I'm still considering whether to buy backups of the Becca bronzers that I love. I also have a bazillion bronzers, so I don't know. I only have like two months to decide. In some ways, I'm not surprised these brands are shutting down because I hate to say it, but fucking TikTok and YouTube really has changed it. I have a super hyped mascara it's just not i don't think it's ne was necessarily overhyped l'oreal paradise you guys this is probably one of the best drugstore mascaras i have tried it's still such a great mascara sometimes you have to let mascaras dry out a little bit and then it's like wow if you wonder what i'm doing i'm blinking into my eyelashes because i feel like i get more volume this is the kvd liquid lipstick definitely this was so hyped on youtube that it just, it made me want it so much. One of the first liquid lipsticks I ever got. I didn't use this for such a long time because of the shade. Like, it's actually a lot deeper than you think it's going to be. But actually, it's pretty rosy toned. They're comfortable. They're pretty thin. Um, they are drying liquid lipsticks that show everything on your lips. Just because I felt like it. I'm going to put um, the H&M In A Nutshell lipstick on top. Just to nude it down a little bit. That was all the overhyped products. Probably have a shitload more. What is a super overhyped product that you own? Let me know in the comment below. 
Um, but give this video a like if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you like it, I'd really appreciate it. I don't do makeup content that often anymore, I tend to do a lot of commentary, but if you do like these videos, please like it so I know. Sometimes I just like to sit in front of the camera and feel like I'm chatting to someone. So thank you for listening to me and joining me, but I hope to see you all in the next one. Bye!